Hey guys, how's it going? I hope this video finds you well as always. Uh, today we are going to talk about two different types of cells. One of them is going to be prokaryotes and the other one is going to be eukaryotes. Now you need to understand the difference between these two by the time that we finish this lecture, okay? Uh, the content objective in here is very simple. Just remember to, that you have to be able to compare and contrast prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Uh, if you want to make this an essential question, always remember the easiest way you can do this is just add a can I statement in the front. So can I compare and contrast prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells? So that will be our content objective here. And keep that in mind as we go through the lecture. Uh, the first thing is this warm up that we did, we compared the two cells. I want to just reinforce the differences between the sizes, notice this how big one this is compared to this one, and also that this one has a lot more complexity. Look at all the things that are inside of this versus in here, you just have um, few things uh, inside of it, okay? Um, there's a video that we have already watched, so we're gonna go ahead and skip this. Now, one thing that I do want to keep uh, in mind, guys, is that when we talked about levels of organization okay in levels of organization you have to remember let me make sure that i can spell when you are talking about the different levels keep in mind that life begins at the cell level things like atoms molecules macromolecules or in other words biomolecules uh, and even organelles which are the tiny little things that are inside of the cells, these things are organelles here. Uh, those things are not considered living. However, when you get to cells, tissues, organs, organ systems, and organisms, those things are considered to be living. Now, how many cells in a human body? Well, the answer is really is trillions and trillions. Um, there's an estimated 100 trillion cells in a human body, in a grown human body. Um, and one thing that I do want to, you to know is that not all of those cells are going to be actual human cells. There's a lot of bacterium cells that live inside of your body all the time. And in fact, there's some um, you know, research that indicates that we even have more uh, bacteria uh, than we actually have human cells. So just something to keep in mind and maybe to research a little more about it in Google if you have some time. Um, how did we come about cells? Well, cells were discovered in the year 1665. That was a long, long time ago, and it was discovered by the scientist Robert Hooke. Now, Robert Hooke was a scientist that did a lot of study on cells, and he was the first one to discover cells. He actually made his own compound microscope where he uh, observed uh, cork cells, and cork cells are kind of like plant cells okay they're from a specific type of tree and when he saw these cells under the microscope uh, he decided to call them uh, cells simply because it looked like a uh, room where the monks would live uh, during that time so i guess the, um, the the rooms where monks would live during that time were also called cells so he just developed the name cells from that uh, time now, a little bit after that, uh, we coined the terms the cell theory, and there's a couple of things that you need to understand, or three things that you need to understand about the cell theory. The most important one is that all living organisms are composed of cells. Um, they can be either unicellular or multicellular. So everything is everything that is living is made of cells. Some of those are going to be uni which means one some others are going to be multi which means many okay so there's different types of organisms uh, also cells are the microscopic building blocks of life and the last one is that all cells come from other cells by cell replication so we're going to talk a huge deal about how it is that cells replicate but just remember that all cells come from previously existing cells. 
how can we look at them today? Well, remember back in the 1600s, there so were very, very tiny compound microscopes. Now we have these huge microscopes that are called electron microscopes. And scientists often use these microscopes. They're very expensive, and they use them so that they can study different cells uh, in organisms like even humans. This is exactly what red blood cells, this is blood cells, specifically the cells that carry oxygen to your um, throughout your body and this is what they look like when you look at it on the drus microscope they kind of have this disc shape all right so we have more than just uh, electron microscopes we have compound microscopes and other uh, different type of microscopes like atom microscopes that we can look at these cells nowadays okay um, now we're going to compare the following cells there's two different types there's some things that they share in common and some things that are going to be different between them. So the first thing that they share in common is a cell wall. Keep in mind that not all eukaryotic cells will have a cell wall, but prokaryotes do have a cell wall. They also are going to share a cell membrane. Every single cell has a cell membrane. All cells will have a cell membrane. Next thing is DNA and or RNA. Every single cell has to have the nu uh, uh, genetic code, the nucleic acids. And the reason is because this is what is going to control everything that happens inside of the cell. The last thing will be ribosomes. If you remember well, ribosomes are in charge of making proteins. Okay, I'm having quite difficulties writing with this today. I want you to just hang in there because uh, it's just a little difficult for me to write with this thing right here. Uh, so ribosomes are going to be shared between them, and they're the ones that make or synthesize proteins. Now, some of the things that they do not share in common are some organelles like the Golgi apparatus, the nucleus, very important to remember, ER, which is the endoplasmic reticulum, and also the mitochondria. Even sometimes things like the chloroplast, which is found in plants, is not going to be found in prokaryotes. So these are prokaryotic cells like bacteria, and these are eukaryotic cells like plants and animal cells. Okay, so we're going to fill in the blanks as we go. We already saw some of the things that are similar. Remember, those things are similar. If you need to go back, just scroll back on the video. But we're also going to take notes on the differences between those two. First one is prokaryotic cells. And prokaryotic cells are going to be smaller and simpler. They're going to be unicellular. All of them will be unicellular. They have no nucleus. And notice how I put this in bold. You need to remember this. Prokaryotes, that pro really means pre, like before the nucleus. So no nucleus found in prokaryotes. Also, there's not going to be any membrane-bound organelles. And I'll explain what those are in just a second, but there's no membrane-bound organelles. Uh, the DNA is usually in a circular shape, like this one right here. And some examples of it will be bacteria. Okay, In fact, that is the only example. Okay, It's going to be bacteria. So what it looks like, you can see from pictures, they're not very complex, just this tiny little circles with not much going on inside of them. Notice that there's not a lot of different um, shapes or different shadows inside of them. Uh, that's what this bacteria looks like. Uh, there's another picture here, and you can see actually that this was replicating, it was dividing at one point. Okay, but this is what they look like under a microscope. Now for the eukaryotic cells, and eukaryotics are more complex. They're larger cells. They're uni or multicellular. Okay, they can be either or. So if you think of a human, for example, humans are multicellular, but something like an amoeba is going to be a uh, unicellular organism, a single cell organism, but it is also a eukaryotic cell. Okay, so they do contain a nucleus, a big nucleus that encloses the DNA and the RNA, that is going to be very, very important to remember for eukaryotic cells. Uh, they also contain membrane-bound organelles. Uh, now, let me just explain to you real quick the difference 
between a, a membrane bound organelle and an organelle that is not membrane bound. So if you think of a ribosome, ribosomes are very tiny um, organelles that make protein, but they only have one layer. That's why ribosomes are found in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. However, when you talk about something like the nucleus or the ER or the mitochondria, these are going to be organelles that have a second layer, a second membrane that surrounds them. And this is what we call a membrane-bound organelle. It has two layers that surrounds it. So lots of different membrane-bound organelles found in eukaryotic cells. Uh, they have a linear DNA. They often coiled up in the form of excess. And some examples are plant cells, animal cells, fungi or fungus, and protista or protists. Uh, these are examples of eukaryotic cells. What they look like, notice under a microscope, they're very, very complex. Look at that big nucleus. You see all those lines? That's the endoplasmic reticulum. And then a lot of different organelles all around them. Same for plant cells. Notice those chloroplasts. They're very complex and a lot bigger. So if you haven't filled this out yet, make sure that you fill it out from this uh, slide. I'm going to go ahead and go to the first learning check. So compare slide A to slide B, which one is a prokaryote and a eukaryote? Remember that the video will stop and ask you the question. Difference here is that big nucleus. I want you to notice all those organelles all around them. Very, very complex. This is the pro, uh, I'm sorry, the eukaryote. While this one is not as complex, will be the prokaryote. All right. Now, I want you to make sure that you answer these questions on uh, the paper as well as on the, um, on the video. It says, an in investigation was performed to study the characteristics of two different cells. Make sure that you read through this. I'm not going to provide an answer, so make sure that you uh, read it carefully and maybe talk to a partner about the answer choices. Pick the best one here. Last one is a scientist recently discovered a pond uh, organism that is unicellular, contains ribosomes, and other non-membrane-bound organelles, and possesses a flagellum. What type of organism would this, whoops, would this uh, cell belong to? So is it a protist, a bacteria, a plant, or a fungi? Remember that only one of these is going to have exactly those characteristics that were mentioned. Okay, so answer that question during the video. Make sure that you also answer that on your paper. Okay, guys, that's going to be all for this video. Um, I hope that you uh, learn a little bit about prokaryotes and eukaryotic cells. Remember that essential question. Uh, keep that in mind as you answer the summary. And if you have questions, make sure that you write them down on that uh, questions uh, side of the Cornell notes. All right, um, I'll see you soon, and thank you for watching.